Hi, Nassim. Hi, Yanir. Are you okay? All okay. Okay, good. I made it uh, through COVID. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you're doing better. Uh, it's... Not doing well, actually, not doing better. Uh, I hear you've been going on long walks. Yeah, 10 miles a day. Good, good, that's quite impressive. So, um, uh, what are your thoughts about the current situation? Okay, so uh, let, let's focus on a very few number of points, okay? Um, and, and let's, a uh, uh, few points, let's go back to our initial reaction to this uh, COVID about a year and uh, three months ago in January of 2020, when we said, listen, it's a multiplicated process, you cannot ignore it. and if you must panic, panic early. Right. Okay, so that was a point. So those who panicked early have been rewarded. That's right. And those who panicked late ended up, you know, losing on both sides. In other words, the people had that dichotomy, you know, this is going to cost us economically. And it looks like that the economy should not, from the beginning, we said it should not, it's, it's inseparable. If you kill COVID, you save your economy, you help the economy. It's not like at the expense of the economy. And so I'll let you now present, there's been an interesting paper in France yeah. that, you know, I, 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 I didn't, I mean, I, I, I took a look at this stuff, but I, can't, I, I didn't go through the details of the methodology to see if, if it's 100% okay, but it looks kosher. Yeah. And, and, but naively we can say the results, we can say that countries like Taiwan, Singapore, uh, Malaysia, uh, Japan, and uh, um, uh, Vietnam <laughs> did very well, both economically and, um, and uh, health-wise. Yeah. Whereas I, countries I think, like Sweden did poorly on both sides, on both counts. Yeah, exactly. And I think that the key, you know, th this was clear in our original paper that you know, somehow people don't understand that our, you know, emotions of fear or of panic are part of making a good decision, right? If you don't know that there's some bad outcome that you should avoid, then uh, you won't act on it. And so somehow people are saying, no, don't be afraid. Fear is somehow a bad thing. But yeah, no, I mean, some afraid. fears are patently uh, uh... Uh, bad and some are uh, okay and and we in an earlier paper on a precautionary principle uh, made a distinction between the two of them. That's right. And, well, it's trivial and as a matter of fact, we try to limit precaution to right. fields where you have a multiplicative process, things that have fat tails, things that are, belong to the power law category. Yeah. So let's talk oh, about ahead. this situation. So as we said, Taiwan has been doing well. China recovered. They're expecting to have 9% growth this year. Um, uh, uh, Australia, New Zealand, they have rebound of the economy after lockdown. They, you know, they had a few weeks of lockdown. You know, I think uh, someone said it's less than eight weeks in, Ty in, in New Zealand altogether, including the small lockdowns they had after the initial one. And in the meantime, it's like the UK has had six months of lockdown and yo-yo lockdowns and devastation of the economy. So the point is that if you understand that, then the, the answer is clear. But if you want to explain this in economics term, you need the data. And, and, and this is what this French paper does. And I think it does a, a, a really good job. So let me show you a key figure in this paper. So, so this is figure two, we can go back and look at the other figures, but basically what this has is the deaths per million in this axis <clears throat> and the percent GDP decline in this. So this is 0% and this is zero. So the lower right corner is merit, right? In fact, you wanna be gross, so you wanna yeah. pass this point. And, and what this is doing is it's doing an analysis of a particular period of time. And so it doesn't entirely capture the dynamics. So the point is that if you, if you invest and then you get your returns and you look at a particular period of time, then of course you combine the investment, which is a loss with the returns, which is a gain. 
So you have to actually project out and say what's going to happen over time. So what we see is that New Zealand and Australia and South Korea and even Japan, they, they have low deaths. Um, and and th these countries in particular have low cost in terms of economy. Yeah, but let me let me let me warn you about this. Uh, I mean, why I don't like these graphs too much. Uh, uh, the, the, there's something there. Okay, uh, you see the your GDP decline is a function of your own GDP decline and the world's GDP decline. Correct. So the fact that you have a GDP decline in the United States because of bad policies in the United States may cause a GDP decline in the United States. And the way to do it, you know, methodologically is to find factors that are the independent of other countries and dependent of that proper country. Right. Okay, yeah. economic factors that are not, and, and look at the behavior of these factors, those you can control. So this is why I'm, I'm you know, it's fine. Well, I agree. It looks, I, I... Good. it looks good. It proves the point. This is where I'm usually queasy. Uh, and it, with time, I'm becoming even more uh, rigorous uh, scientist, and I can't take a lot of these economic uh, statements at face value. But at least what we're getting here from this graph is... Uh, the negative side of the negativa, which is that you cannot make a claim that uh, trying to kill the virus, okay, is going to harm your economy. That no, you can't. Definitely exactly debunk right. that uh, right-wing uh, uh, Texas uh, pseudo-libertarian claim. Okay, That's right. and you also cannot claim that people are countries that have tried to trade off, you know, economy versus disease by opening up and then shutting down when it got too bad. That they actually protected their economy. That's clearly okay. wrong, and 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 that's kind of obvious. And and the rest of this paper does it over time. So what we see is you compare the zero COVID countries, and and this is um, uh, this is for um, a, a particular set of countries, right? The OECD uh, countries, and and what you see is that um, the zero COVID countries, when you combine them. Uh, have tremendous uh, uh, benefit and sustained benefit in terms of economic activity. So there, there is this view again that you know Australia and New Zealand locked down. They've been in lockdown, you know, from the beginning, but it's totally wrong, right? They locked down and then they opened up. They've been having big. Sports. Okay, there is there is something here more central than lockdown. Uh, what we were advertising uh, from the beginning. The idea of lockdown is entirely modern. The classical way to deal with pandemics is with something called a lockout. Right. Okay. In other words, you close the borders, you get a lot more payoff, establish green zones. And that looks like that's the achievement of these countries rather than locking down uh, people at home, uh, getting them frustrated and causing whatever, all this literature on uh, why should we be in prison in our own homes. Forget the lockout theory. And that was implemented through time. Uh, you know, ever since we've had pandemics, we've had uh, quarantines of, of ships and, and physical, uh, I mean, and land uh, travelers. Yeah, and, and the point is that they, it, it's the idea that somehow you cannot stop cases from coming in that has limited my, many countries from actually taking action. So once you can limit cases from coming in, uh, and for example, now it's being done in Portugal, they have intermunicipal travel restrictions. In Ireland, they had inter-county travel. Yeah, but we had to get to that because the EU started invoking, I mean, what bogus principle. You see, the EU bureaucrats are very good at regulating the, your vacuum cleaner at home, how much energy you can have, but right. not good at regulating stuff that like, uh, like COVID. So had they shut down countries, or limited travel between countries or mandated PCR to go from one place to another, which they do now, by the way, they ended up doing. Had they done that in the beginning, we would have had a much better picture in Europe. Yeah, and the point is that they actually eliminated it in many countries in Europe. Let's see what else they have here. This is the change in, in workplace and leisure and retail mobility indices. So we have workplace mobility, we have retail and recreation. So this is one of the main things, right? A lot of retail organizations, restaurants, hotels, and, and, and so on, they've been pushing very hard to open up because of the idea that the economy, if it opens up, they'll be able to earn income. 
But what you see is that in fact, in the countries that have achieved elimination, they're doing incredibly better, right? This is 20% um, better in terms of mobility in retail and recreation. Yeah, I mean, airline, it's like airlines were uh, the ones who hurt us in the beginning, okay? By bringing, transporting COVID across the planet and the airline are the one, the industries that suffer the most. Yeah, and, and, and the point right. is that if they had agreed to a strong restriction at the time, then this would have been gone, right? They would have been done within a few months or even a few weeks if they had done it early enough. This is Canada. So if you look at the uh, a same thing in workplace and retail recreation, but now you compare the uh, zero COVID provinces in Canada. So this is within Canada, the Atlantic Canada provinces have achieved zero COVID, right? So they had a few small outbreaks, but they quickly pounced on them and got rid of them, just like you would do with, you know, fires. Um, and 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 look at this, eighteen percent differences. Uh, okay. So difference. can we can we summarize the the point? I mean, in like less under a minute. Yeah. So the main thing is those countries that went for elimination have done incredibly better because they took the investment, they did the restrictions over a very short period of time. And the other countries have been putting on restrictions, taking off restrictions, putting on restrictions, taking on restrictions. And as the variants have gotten worse, they have to do more and more restrictions. Whereas in the countries that did elimination, they're acting as if there is no disease in the world internally. The only thing they have to do is they have to limit the travel to places that have the disease and do the 14 day quarantines that are needed. And, and okay. one more thing. Have, yeah, one question uh, uh, and one comment. I said, let me start with a comment. I mean, it's easy for New Zealand being an island to <laughs> Uh, the use connectivity uh, is easy for Australia, they're far away, and it's much harder for London, for example, or, or Paris, or so places in Europe. How high? That's the first comment. Uh, comment, and then the question I'm going to ask now, uh, related to, to all of this uh, thing, is uh, would a PCR like, like yeah. double exam in, in uh, Lebanon when they were doing smart things in the beginning? I, I mean, it took the United States a year and two months of pandemics, pandemic to mandate, or a year and one month of pandemic to mandate the PCR yeah. at the border. I mean, so, I mean, you were limiting international travel, you know, I mean, it's sort of like having a, a flood in your, uh, in your house. And you're not stopping the water; you're just moving the water with a with a teaspoon. Okay, so it's not going to work. Uh, the the now uh, Lebanon, for example, had double PCR. You had to show up with a, to with a negative PCR, and they they gave you a test upon arrival. Yeah. So and it's when they suspended that. Let's do it. Two things went crazy. So, so my question, uh, Yanir, would a uh, what what we called in our one of our early papers uh, a year and a, half, a year and two months ago, uh, overactive testing. Right. Let's talk. What we called would that would that would that suffice? No. So so the short answer is not quite. Let's go back first to the one qu first question, which is. Um, is it more difficult in the UK? So it turns out that if you look at tourism to the UK, it's the same as tourism to Australia and New Zealand. Each, in fact, if you look at UK, I have these plots. If you look at tourism in UK, in Ireland, in New Zealand, in Australia, it's the same amount of tourism. It's quite amazing how similar it is. Really? The difference in the UK, yeah. Is that the UK people leave? It's difference is that there's transit. People go into the airport and leave. In other words, the, the, it's just the it's just the fact that London is this hub where people fly to Boston through to, to from Boston to uh, uh, Africa or Asia. They go through London, but the people don't get all out of the airport. I see. No, but, but, but in, 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 in Europe, I thought I was under the impression that the UK people travel a lot. The the uh, a lot. No, the, the people themselves. I mean, yeah, you no, if you live there, you understand it. But Sorry? the point is, 
the point is the following that if you if you actually look at the amount of travel it's it's not that different except for these people who are going through which is you know honestly is 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 a bad thing to pay the price of what they've been paying um but but so first of all that's the second of all um you i mean now the uk is doing a quarantines in managed quarantine facilities and so they've finally gotten to it after having you know all of the variants and realizing that they have to stop variants from getting in they're probably not doing it that well yet i mean i don't think they're doing it from every place and so on but but it doesn't make any sense right you, the, the the weak link is the travel restrictions and if you do the travel restrictions and you so you think that a pcr is not enough and pcr is not enough and the reason pcr is not enough is first of all that even when you have a person in the prime time where they're the most contagious where they're starting to have symptoms um, the pcr is 30% false negative and reducing transmission or possibility of someone transmitting by a third is not enough and of course when you test someone coming into a country there's a couple of days delay and so it's worse it's probably like 50% or whatever it's like flipping a coin to prevent transmission uh, coming into the country someone who's infected and transmitting so it really actually doesn't work you really need and the point is that if it worked everyone would be doing it actually it, it, no if it's one third uh, so it should be two thirds reduction in risk in in multiplication two thirds right but yeah. think about uh, outbreak control Right. Two third, two third reduction in multiplication. You, you're, uh, you, uh, you're, you introduce uh, right. So the, are the are not big time. Yeah, but you're doing it in the fourteen day quarantines, you're talking about one percent. Okay, so I see, I see. So factor of a hundred matters in a way that factor. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Th this I understand. The problem is that the quarantines are not as um, enforceable and not, you know. Uh, uh, they're not people may not comply as easily as they do with uh, PCRs. Right, and but you read about the quarantines in Australia and New Zealand, and people do them. But then the the benefit of that that's the one price. The benefit of it is that everyone's going to bars and restaurants and performances and and rock concerts and and all of that stuff. So the point is that if you focus on the restriction, it sounds like it's a big deal. But if you focus on the opportunity for the benefit, I don't know. The payoff is monstrous. I mean, people it. have known. I mean, the quarantines are not new. I, I, I wrote in that paper we wrote together. Actually, we you were co-author when we showed that the Ottoman Empire had specific rules of quarantine. If you came from Mecca, you had nine days. But if you came from Austro-Hungarian Empire, it was seven days, yeah. and it was mandatory, and it lasted for centuries. Yeah, and and people think that we're beyond those things somehow. But the point is that it's, I mean, you know this, right? It's the, uh, um, it's the, the, the most persistent things are the things that have been around the longer. The things that are going to be useful in the future are the things that have persisted the most in the past, right? What do you call it? You call it the- um, The Lindy effect. It's Lindy. Actually, yeah, it, it, it's actually uh, misunderstood. <laughs> no, it's it's one of the properties of a stochastic process. That's right. That 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 gives you more evidence of survival of time, but it's largely misinterpreted. Right. Uh, but but okay. bottom line is, it, it it's one of the essential control processes for a pandemic. All, all right, Yanir. So great to have a conversation again with you. When should we have another one? Um, well, I I think the main thing uh, that I would. Uh, hint at and talk about next time is that there really has been a shift in the conversation uh, in uh, the public health and epidemiology community, realizing that at the beginning, the mistake was made, right? What was the mistake? The mistake was saying that elimination was not possible. We now know that elimination is possible. I see, I see. And then people have these doubts. And let me just finish with this because we didn't say something that is important. I'll mention it. There are many, many places in Europe that are thinking now, Germany, France, uh, uh, Italy, uh, Spain, Portugal, and uh, other countries, UK, so on, that where the conversation about elimination, about zero COVID is happening. But again, a lot of the concern is about the ability to impose travel restrictions. And 
when we talk about these 14 day quarantines, it's still important to understand that when you have a land border, you can allow commuters, essential commuters, because people who are working in one place and living in another place, they take responsibility much more than people who are just traveling. I see, no, definitely, no, localism, but you have a, if it's imposed by the, by the locality. I have one more comment to make before we end. We end. It must be a hybrid of uh, multi-PCRs. You keep the person for several days and administer yeah. daily PCR, and then by then you know that you, you span the contagious period, you see? Yeah. I, I just spoke with someone who did this actually in in, in Netherlands, in Northern really? Netherlands, where they control it. He's, he has responsibility for the hospitals. It was great to talk with him because he used these principles of networks of contagion and understood that hospitals were, were super spreader locations. And so whenever anybody comes into the hospital after there's a positive case, they take 14 days in a row they do testing in order to be able to prevent uh, events in the hospital. And, and, and again, the reason is that um, it's just so easy to have outbreaks. And, and the reason why we need 14 days is not because of the PCR being positive or negative, it's because of the incubation period. Yeah, no, definitely. If, at, the, at the micro level, definitely. We're talking about a hospital. But for an individual coming into uh, the country, well, I think... The point is, if you're one individual, there's no yeah. problem. But if you're doing a, a quarantine... Yeah, no, definitely, definitely, for a hospital. But for one person coming into the country, three or four days of PCRs in a, in a semi-quarantine would probably be nice, uh, a nice uh, compromise. If you were the only person coming into the country, I would say that's fine. But if you have a hundred people coming into the country or a thousand people coming into the country, it wouldn't work. Okay, so we'll debate that next time. Have an excellent weekend and, uh, and thanks again for this wonderful conversation. Great to talk with you. Thanks. Well, thanks. Well, talk to you later. Bye-bye.